All right, guys, Andrew here, the Wacken 47 Network. I am here with the one, the only, David Atkins, and not from the Atkins diet. Because oh, no. I, I, yeah. I, uh, I, I don't even know what the Atkins <laughs> diet is. I heard it's bad. Anyways, David, how you been doing? Oh, man, this year, oh, wow. Uh, a lot, actually. Um, two books released, working on three. Then, if that ain't bad enough, we've got one of them that is being looked at for a live action film. Then, if that ain't bad enough, uh, we've got um, guys wanting to do a television series. So, yeah, uh, busy ain't the word. <laughs> well, it, 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 it sounds fun. Um, so, you want to tell us about your, uh, you want to give us either a sneak peek or uh, tell us about, uh, you know, what, what's, what's coming up? Okay, uh, I'll, I guess I'll start off with the final in the Sons of Solastar series. Um, everybody was like looking at it going, wait a minute, there's only going to be three books? I was like, yes, because that's the precursor to Guardians of the Galaxy. And they were like, okay, so why is it leading into that? Because my ultimate goal in, in when I started writing was to create my own world, my own rules, be literal a god of my own creation so in that whole scenario i wanted to do exactly like J.R. tolkien did being able to literally identify and structuralize civilization based off of people and things that i have experienced but change it from what actually is around us now so when i looked at that i was like okay so for me to do that how in the world am i going to do it and actually make it make sense because everybody's going to relate to their world in that whole scenario. Well, it's like the best way you can do it. You have to build the world, destroy it, then rebuild it. And everybody's like, whoa, you're actually going to destroy the world in Sons of Solastar. And I was like, sort of. So you have to. Why? Think about why is it. that? Why, why do you have to? Okay, Sons of Solastar. This world, where we are right now, with the war, the racial problems, the religious diversity, the skeptics, the maniacs, and everything else we've got in this world at one time, and magic opens up. You're going to tell me, since we took gunpowder from fireworks and created a ballistic missile, that we wouldn't take magic for what it is and use it to destroy ourselves. I mean, I mean, I can see people destroying themselves with magic. I mean, it's like, you know, it's, it's like a weapon. I mean, magic's like a weapon. So. And everybody looks at Harry Potter and goes, well, they were using magic. Well, there's one part of Harry Potter that wasn't expressed. It was the exact same type of demograph that isn't expressed in Jennifer Estep's books or in Jim Butcher's books. If humans can use magic, why can't everything else? And in my world, everything at one point or another can use magic. So if you want to go to China and mess with about two million jade spiders, be my guest. I'm not a Spiders fan, so let's let's not go there. Um, God. Um, right. So, what? Um, so what has been like your like, you know, book wise? I heard that you're you're gonna try to get like uh, you got some going into like a film, a uh, TV. Um, are 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 you like going to um, like you know? Do I'll put it to you this way. You can, you can either go with the film from a book going into Harry Potter, where it's widely accepted, widely controversial, but on the whole ends up being a great film and film series. Or you can go the other route and it be Aragon. <laughs> Can we not talk about that film, Aragon? I mean, come on, that film. Exactly. And there's the issue. So it could be good or it could be really bad. And the thing about it is, is 
horror films are very easily done. And when I first started, the, I didn't even think about writing horror at all, ever. And after my second book came out, people were telling me how absolutely horrible, like literally pure horror, this book was. And I was like, okay, but I don't see it as horror. And they were like, um, an earthworm that can eat you? That's <laughs> terrifying. And I was like, yeah, well, yeah, if it's magical and this, that, and the other, where do you think it's going to, what do you think it's going to do? Somebody's going to train it to do what it wants to do. So, yeah, it's like that. So, uh, I took that and I was like, okay, so if I was to create my own horror film, what would I do it on? What would I base that on? Some of the scariest stuff I've ever dealt with, okay? The very first and second Silent Hill. The very first and second Resident Evil. Then I went and took it a step further. I went with Jeffrey Deaver, Bone Collector. Then I went one step further above and beyond that. My own study in the paranormal and in psychological manifestations. And I was like, okay, that's pretty terrifying yeah. when you think about it. But if you're going to make it really terrifying, everybody says The Walking Dead is terrifying. I don't find that scary. Because all I got to do is outrun them. True. Technically. Yes, true, yes. Not only that, a very good swing with a machete pretty much is a good indication that you can defend yourself. Now, you want to talk about horror... How about the strain? A little insect inside of you that starts changing you from you being you into it. And everyone around you doesn't know if you are actually you or not. And so now it's the whole invasion of the body snatchers on a whole critical level. So yeah, that's a little more terrifying. So I started thinking about that and I was like, okay, now put them in an enclosed area. Ooh. Make it to where they can't escape. Ooh. That would be a locked up hotel. Yes. All right. Now, under those circumstances, you still have something that's physical. So let's take away the physical. So now you think they're people, but in all actuality, they're not. So you're actually conversating with either ghosts or not ghosts, and you don't know. Jeez. You're starting to, oh God, I can't, I can't imagine <laughs> if that would be, if, if that happens, I would be scared. I would be scared. Do you know how scared, I mean, to have little insects controlling you, like controlling you, it is bad. It is extremely bad. Um, uh, I mean, <laughs> I, I just can't think of it. Like, Oh, trust me. So there's some people that have read some of the chapters that I've wrote. And they asked me what my goal was this, with, with this book. And I said to make the crea and create the scariest book ever wrote. And then they agreed that I was on a good start. <laughs> I hope you finish it. Oh, yeah. That's not going to oh, be an issue. Oh, goodness. Um, so... You're at convention, so you're at these conventions. Um, obviously, you're here at Ichiban Con. Um, what are I? You know, you, you, I, you know, you're best known for your well, not well, you know, you're known for best known for one of them being you know the Cards Against Humanity, of course, panel. Because <laughs> what worst, it's the worst deviation of humanity I've ever done. It's Cards Against <laughs> Humanity. You really can't go wrong with that. So then you also got. Um, Detective Conan, you got those oh, um, yes. panels as well. Um, for people who don't know the Detective Conan panel, can you explain how that works? Well, everybody wants to be or try and figure out a mystery. So what happens when you go and the mystery happens in a room that you're in and you know one of them is the murderer, but you don't know which one. And they're sitting somewhere close by you. Now what? 
Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, that would be, I mean, you start literally throwing exact ex exaggerations and accusations everywhere. Yeah, so, <laughs> I mean, what, I mean, if, if we had like a round of eight table and then I was the murderer, but like everyone else around you could be the murderer. And here's the thing. You're across from the person you killed. And now it's not just the fact being of you being the killer. We have to prove through evidence that you are the killer. Otherwise, the accusations are on dumbfounded. Oh. And I know you'll be running some this weekend. Oh, yes. And this is probably the most extravagant episode we've ever done so far. This Ooh. one has beaten every single thing I've thought of doing, but it led to this point. And I, uh, we're going to be covering that, too. We are covering that panel. We will be recording that panel. We will be putting it on YouTube for everyone to watch. I, I've, it sounds interesting to me and up to the point. I want to record this and come watch it. And I find it amazing that everybody asks, where can I see your panels? And I start giving them the actual conventions that I'm going to be at. And they always come by and say, well, I can't make it to this one. I can't make it to that one. And then everybody tries to film it. And I found, I don't know how many films of my panels on YouTube and everywhere else. And yet in the same instance, I'm never the one that actually filmed them. So it gets interesting very quickly. You got me now. <laughs> because I have the professional equipment. Ah, ha, 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 ha. Unfortunately, ha. I have found one that was made on a cell phone. That did not turn out very well. <laughs> cell phone videos, unless you have a good phone very and a tripod, a very good phone, and you decide to record in 4K, which I'm surprised you will. Oh, especially in this lighting. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's. I mean, I'm even surprised that this turns out good, which it will be good. <laughs> but um, let's see. I'm trying to think of any more queen. Oh, a buffet. I'm kidding. Um, let's see. So I. So I'm presuming the Detective Conan has been your most successful panel at any con it you go to. It was until this past year. Who beat it? What beat it? Are you a nerd? Apparently, that's my so most sought off, like literally sought after panel now. And I'm like, okay, that's kind of interesting since it's not a, you know, fun, go lucky, improv, whatever type of panel. But it's one of the most sought after because we actually go through the whole description of what a nerd is. Um, and we do a whole historical, factual based everything on it. Um, we go through what Hollywood says, what other countries say, and a lot of other stuff. It's kind of interesting. And it's a, it's nerds, so yeah, why not? It's nerds. Everyone can join nerds. Um, so books. Let's go back to your books here. What has been your most successful book and or series? Oh, Sons of Solastar by far so far. Um, Everybody, I mean, I have yet to get one bad review or even somebody complaining about it. The only complaint I literally had was not killing off one of the characters that is one of the main characters. But and you don't want to kill off one of the main characters. Well, when it comes to females, they don't like other females. Oh, so well. they're going to want to kill the girlfriend off because they don't think he deserves one, I guess. Of, I don't of course the girl... Of course the girls want to kill, kill each other. Yeah. It's like girls trying to say that they like Hermione. <laughs> no. <laughs> they don't, they, they love Harry. They don't like Hermione. What about Ronald? He's a ginger. Unfortunately, there's a lot of girls that actually like Ron, but hate Hermione still. They, they just still don't get how Ron and Hermione got together. Which I, I find hilarious. I thought it would be Harry and Hermione, I swear. Oh, you ain't the only one. I ship that. In the Hawks Wild Day, I thought Hermione would be with neither one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just be with some random quote. <laughs> yeah, actually, when it, when it came to the Goblet of Fire thing, I actually thought he was she was going to stay with him. <laughs> oh, man, this is...
Wow. Um, <laughs> so if people obviously watching on this, either you've been to Ichi or not been, but what, what you must have a busy 2016 convention schedule. Um, 23, because I refuse to count this one as this year. I don't care. Uh, but 23 this year, this would have been number 24 if it was counted as this year. But I refuse to count it like that. Because it's and, like, yeah. you know. We only got six hours We got left. six hours till 2016 comes into the window. Yeah. Happy New Year's Eve again. <laughs> and under those circumstances, I look at it for being next year. And with that being the case, I've got 12 already booked for next year. Which ones? I'm going to not list all of them, but we're looking at Neko Wants Me Back. We've got um, Itchy This Year, Triad, Bonsai. We've got um, Anablaze. That's a new one. Tristar is actually wanting me, which I thought was kind of unique. Um, there, there's a lot of them that I've never heard of that are back, like, having questions and wanting me there as to who I am because apparently I went ballistic this year. Um, yeah, with like a bunch of... I mean, at least you're not like Dunbar. Dunbar had like third, like, was like uh, booked every no. other week. No, I was supposed to have three more this month, and I refused. <laughs> if I had his schedule... Oh, God. Well, you gotta think. I write books for a living. If I can't write books, it, you know. Yeah. So... Uh, you should come to Nashi. Yeah, they've already asked, and it looks like I might be. <laughs> it's not like I'm representing Nashi or anything. <laughs> Wait, um, you do video games? Um, okay, with Hotel Nowhere, We've got people interested in it. We don't know about that yet. Um, we're going to get past the live action movie first. Then after that, we'll be discussing on if we're going to see that as a venue. Um, a lot of people that have been talking to me says that it's set up to where it could be a video game. Um, and I see that, I do. But I... I'm very cautious when it comes to certain things, especially when it comes to your books. Um, a lot of people like, uh, let's say J.K. Rowling. J.K. Rowling to me didn't coddle her book. She did. Jim Butcher, he coddled his. He was offered the whole television series, this, that, and the other, and then pulled out when they did what they did, which I totally understand. Um, a few other ones that I know of did the exact same thing. Especially Aragon. Aragon was actually able to become not only the movie, but also a video game. And he didn't like what they were doing, so yeah, he's going to pull out. Um, same thing with me. If I see that, you know, this looks venueable, then I'll do it. But... I'm one that I, I literally, it's my book, it's my story. So I want to do it justice. It's not that I want to protect it, make sure nobody steals it, that's not it. If anything, it'd be just the opposite. But I don't want it to change my idea of what that story is. And with Silent Hill, you saw the dimension change. At, right after the second one, they changed the entire cast, they changed the entire setup, they got a new studio to do it, and you saw what happened. So, yeah, there's the issue. I mean, I just, I mean, with, um, with you know, books becoming TV shows too, like you know, some anime and manga series. Oh man, Bones, um, Detective Murdoch. You've got Dresden Files, which failed because there again, they didn't even read the series. Um, you've got. Uh, what's some of the other ones that Castle has his own book series that came from the television series uh, which actually was vice versa um, you've got technically um, oh what is it that one uh, sci-fi book um, Stargate? No 
No, not Stargate, but uh, the BBC special. Sherlock. Yeah. Sherlock. Oh, speaking um, of which, the New Year's special is... Elementary. Oh, yeah, uh, elementary as well. All these other ones that literally came from books. They got their idea off of books. And uh, it's just, well, what do you do? You know, um, people have run out of ideas or ways to actually create their own. So, yeah, they're going to go to books. There's no way around that. Um, Spiders of Each went, eat, you know, same thing. Um, there's a lot of them. Jessica Jones, Flash, Green Lantern, and Green Arrow. I mean, all of them. Every single thing that most of what CW puts out now. Yeah. It's all got books or comic books or graphic novels or something associated with something. Right. So, yeah. Um, it's what it is there's no way around it um the story is a story and it all comes into presentation and the presentation that a lot of them give are a little bit diverse a little but they still stay true to the story in court in most cases so yeah um i don't see a problem with it as long as there again it stays true to the court right yeah because like you know we don't want it drifting off from like the main the main, like, let's say if it came from the book, like, the main plot, because if it does, you wreck the show, you, and, you know, reasons why the author would pull out is because, um, you know... Well, like with stick. Elementary. Elementary got way too diverse of what Sherlock was. I mean, that... That was way off base. Sure Murdoch was Mysteries one. was six seasons also, but it stayed more true to the story up until the last two seasons. Um, Sherlock, Sherlock. Agatha Christie Ministries, same thing. Right. Same thing with Bones. They stay true to the story up until. But in the same instance, everybody wants a romance. Everybody wants to see some sort of connection between the main characters. So in that whole scenario, unless you're talking about Doctor Who, you know, and even then, you got to take a look at Rose Tyler. So, yeah. Everyone remembers Rose Tyler. <laughs> I don't want to leave you. That's why you got a doctor that doesn't regenerate. It is what it is. Yeah, well, mm, unless I can think of any more questions on top of my head. Because <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, you gave me <laughs> most of the questions from Dunbar, which I do think. Oh, no problem. Are you kidding? I'm the one that usually does the interviews, which I'm still surprised about. Um, the conventions come to me and let's say they want to have an interview type session. Well, they have all the cameramen there, but nobody wants to ask the questions. And I'm like, oh, I'll somebody's got to do it. Otherwise, we're here going to be this sitting guy. around just waving. I mean, that's kind of like ridiculous. This guy. So, yeah. Right. Well, unless I can think of any more. <laughs> David Atkins, thank you so much. Always a pleasure. And I will. we will be recording his panel, the... Detective Conan one and the Cars Against Humanity from Bonsai it is either on there or not but I will get to it unless it is already not on there in that case <laughs> but again David Atkins author genius <laughs> just everything A to everything thank you again so uh, much always oh yeah <laughs> there we go